Hey everyone, I wanted to hop on here and talk to you about one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And I feel like it could really appeal to you if you're into the fantasy or the sci-fi genre, especially if anyone that you may know is a Harry Potter fan. I feel like this could be a cool story to evangelize because it starts in the book of Acts, uh, the eighth chapter, starting at verse nine. So there was a sorcerer named Simon who practiced the dark arts in Samaria. He amazed all the people in Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. He had the attention of everyone, both low and great, rich or poor. And he was called the great power of God. And now what's interesting is we we have entering into this story, uh, Philip, he was a Hellenistic Jew and he is an, uh, an evangelist. And so this was after the first martyrdom in the church in the previous chapter. Um, this guy, he comes in, uh, he preaches the gospel, but he also backs up the validity of this message with uh, signs and wonders. Uh, he cast out devils, it says, for with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many and many were paralyzed. And many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So Simon himself had a great following himself. And he was one of the people in Samaria that heard the message. You know, he saw the signs, he saw the wonders and he believed. And if we keep reading, it says, but when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now, me personally, I read that as so basically they all died because they went down in the water as their former self and came up anew. You know, also, um, just like a little side note, you know, the gospel is supposed to be a very personal message. Uh, you can pack out arenas and you can have large crowds, which is what God wants, because but the emphasis is the gospel is for the individual. Um, you think about how it says how he he how he proclaimed the name of Jesus Christ. And I could give you a name and you may not even know the person. If I gave you my name, you might be like, well, I don't really know who that is. It's just some guy on YouTube. But the name of Jesus Christ was something meant to be intimate and personal with the individual hearing it. Um, because as we can see in this chapter, the gospel interrupts narratives, it changes people's lives, but it also breaks down barriers. And despite popular belief, it's not supposed to create more barriers, but to break the barriers down. Because historically, the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. But when it comes to the, but when it comes to the work of God and preaching the true gospel, it is for the individual. It's not something given based off a of personal preference. Uh, who you like, who you don't like, because by that regard, the Samaritans would have been ignored. But the cool thing about God is that he wants everyone. Um, you don't clean yourself up and then you come to him. He wants everyone wherever you're at. And so we see Simon, sorcerer, very popular, and he has the gospel introduced to him with the signs. And one of the things I love that the Apostle Paul, you know, I'm going to paraphrase the, uh, the verse because I don't have it on me. He basically said, you know, I could preach to you in my intellect because he, that man was intellectually a genius. But at the end of the day, what really validates the gospel message is the signs and wonders that follow it. Because by that logic, you know, I could just talk to you and you could believe it based off how good I sound. But that's not good enough because I'm not God. You know, I am not a message and you know, I can't save you. But the signs and the wonders, the, the, the casting out of the impure spirits and the healing of the lame validates that this Jesus that I'm talking about actually can change your life and is real. You know, he's not a cheat code. Uh, he's not a spell, not an incantation. He's a real person to be encountered. So, wow, that was a lot right there. So, let's see. And you also have to think about this scenario because Simon had a following for such a long time and he amazed people but by what he was able to do. So you imagine that if Philip just came, it was just another guy who, for all they knew, maybe was practicing sorcery, what he was doing had to have been something they had never seen before. Because if I've, you know, been att uh, attending um, uh, magic shows my whole life, you know, whenever I go to a show, I'm just going, I'm going to be looking for something I haven't seen. So you have to imagine, you know, he was doing so through the power of the kingdom of darkness. So by the time Philip comes on the scene and does stuff in the power of the spirit of God, it had to have been mind blowing enough to convince these people that this Jesus is true and not Simon. So basically the apostles hear about the work that is going on 
and they send Peter and John uh, to validate, you know, that these people truly have believed. And so the no one had been no one had received the spirit yet, uh, quite yet. And I believe that was intentional. And so people receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And Simon, the sorcerer, um, to backtrack and go back to him, you know, he he did believe, you know, he actually followed Philip, he, you know, he became a fan. And I don't know if he was maybe looking for mentorship or he wanted him to take him up under his wing. But so far, we, um, aside from where we met him, we don't really see any red flags about him. You know, hey, he was in the dark arts. Hey, that's fine. You know, he had an encounter with Jesus. You know, he saw the signs. He saw the casting of the devils. And he heard the message that Philip preached. But what's interesting is, you know, all oh, that sounds really good. Like, there's no red flags. But when he sees hands being laid upon people and them receiving the, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, he's like, okay, it's like something in him, like, sparked. And he was like, hey, and he wanted to pay the apostles so that he could have that same gift now just a side note here when it comes to the gifts of god you can't pay for it it is something that can be cultivated if god has given it to you but that's the emphasis god gave it to you he didn't give it to you because you're his favorite or he likes you more than the next guy it's something that he desired out of his sovereign will, out of his grace out of his grace out of his perfect will because at the end of the day the gifts that we do have are to proclaim the message of jesus christ it's not to proclaim me or or anything else at the end of the day we all have something special on the inside of us that is meant to act as a, a mirror and instead of showing us it is supposed to reflect back to the one that gave it to us and so he is rebuked um let's see and i am getting stirred <laughs> honestly um wow i actually can't find it <laughs> okay so thank you jesus so it's peter peter rebukes him he says, for I see, I think this is very interesting. And this is like really kind of like the core of the message that I wanted to talk to you about. He's When Peter rebukes Simon for trying to pay him so he could get this gift, he said, for I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. That's basically kind of like where I want to stop there. Why was Simon bitter? Because the gospel, it basically interrupted his whole narrative. You have to think, imagine being a celebrity. You're the big kahuna in, in town. He, it, The Bible says the great and the low, the rich and the poor. And he was called the great power of God, the great power of God. He amazed people by his sorcery. And so you have this guy named Philip come out of nowhere. Again, he's a Jew in Samaria. So already that's a problem right there because they historically did not like each other. They, the Jews considered the Samaritans to be half-breeds, not even fully Jewish. And so you have him, but through the power of the Spirit of God and the, and the preaching of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, these barriers are broken down and the people believe because the gospel is for everybody. And so the attention, at least from his world, seems to now be on Philip. Really, you know, Philip wasn't focused on him, but he was focused on Jesus but you have this guy and the gospel, I guess from his perspective, ruined his life. And the reason it ruined his life is because you can get saved. But that's the emphasis that I feel like we need to keep preaching on about having an actual relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, it's not just a confession. It's a, something to continue to be cultivated like a relationship. You know, you wouldn't feel secure if someone, even if they were really attractive and they walked up to you and they said, here, here's my number. I want to be in a relationship with you and then they just walked off you heard the words it sounded good the person looks good they're fine they're beautiful and they gave you their number but you don't really have much validation off of that if that's all they said and then they walked off and that was it you never hear from them again you know a relationship with jesus is to be cultivated um it's the step one in deliverance but god wants to do more and filter really the hell out of us so that we can declare and show forth the glory of god and what's interesting is I feel like he was bitter because now that following is gone. They, they're they getting filled with the Holy Ghost. They've been baptized. They believe. And so the real message. Oh, goodness. My phone interrupted me to tell me I had 10% battery left. Um, the real message that I wanted to say is whenever we pursue God, whether it's like through ministry or even a relationship with him, if it's for the impure 
motives and pure reasons the only place that you can go is deception and the reason i said it is is because after the rebuke of uh, by peter to simon we we know that simon didn't even take it seriously um because he doesn't he wanted simon to pray you know prayer prayer of repentance you know let's have you know these evils come upon him unless he continue to be a captive to sin and he pretty much just you know uh encouraged him and you know ask him to pray for him and we don't know this biblically but historically and this is one of the things i love about the bible is that it is not just um a book of revelation but it is a historical book um, it is things that you can look into and dive deeper into that history does back up and I love that about the Bible I love that about God's Word because it is you know something for the earth to experience you know we're not sanctified for heaven but we're sanctified for the earth uh, this is for us for all time and so historically we found out that Simon and I think there's could be some debate about this depending on where you read it but um he we you know at least he found a sect of Gnosticism which basically teaches a mixture of Christianity, Judaism, and other uh, heresy. Um, it teaches dualism, the concept of two gods. And we even have a name in the English language that we created basically to reference what Simon did. I'm not really sure about the pronunciation of it, but I think it's Simone. And basically, that's basically buying your way into church power and into church authority. And so, just like any real relationship that you might have with someone if you pursue it with impure motives you know there is going to be deception you know um for example maybe you just got your heart broken and you just want to get over it you know you can say all the right things for it to someone but if your only true reason is to just get over someone else and you're just using this person so that you can feel better or you can get back on top you know it is deception for the other person and the only I don't know if this is for somebody or, for, or whatever. This, my phone stopped again talking about you don't have enough space, but I don't really do that much on this phone. But anyways, if you if your motives are impure, the only place you have left to go is deception. So I just want to leave you with that. And I actually want to, in another video, kind of go deeper into this. Um, talking about Bil'am, or as you know, um, Balaam. So yeah, deception is something that's very powerful and yeah, that's pretty much my point. Um, deception is the only option can, uh, if your motives are impure and because God is a real person, he wants you to pursue him for the right reasons because at the end of the day, he does care about you, but life isn't about being a movie where you're the star and everyone else is just kind of just extras in the background this is a movie about jesus and it is to glorify him so i hope that blessed you and i'll see you guys in the next one ciao